there. Today we are working on a paper crafting project. This is a farmhouse home decor sign with a little touch of shabby chic. Since I'm a designer for Monet Bouquets, we'll be focusing on using product from MonetBouquets.com on this project today. So let's get started. I've got this 9 by 9 slat board as our base. We're going to be using Dixie Belle chalk paint and Hurricane Gray on that. I've got this other little 74 cent clearance sign. We'll be using Debbie's Design Diary and Gravel Road Gray chalk paint. Got these letters here, wooden letters. We'll be using the drop cloth shade and the Dixie Bell chalk paint. And then I've also got these wooden numbers, one through nine. We'll be spray painting these in this ultra matte light gray spray paint. You can see my theme here. We're just gonna touch on painting a few of these today so you can kind of see the different shades of grays for my background. And then we'll finish on top with some aquas and some whites and just some more little cream colors. Couple coats on uh, each of these pieces today. And then we're gonna come in on some beautiful board laser cut chipboard from Renee Bouquet's really thick, thick chipboard product. These are called Pretty Ivy in the small pattern. They come in a set of eight. These are beautiful words sweet as honey this is the medium size going to use the word sweet from this today these are decorative claw cans in the medium size they come in a set of six but i'm just going to use one of these in the extra large size you can see the difference here these are beautiful bits which means they're tinier they're, these are gears they come four designs to a set this is a set of three chain link frames although i know you're only looking at one i'm using the smaller of the set and this atc card is the sweetheart atc tag and i'm going to be painting all of these i show you the white swan debbie's design diary but it wasn't quite white enough so i actually pulled out my Waverly chalk paint in the white shade, just painting all these uh, beautiful board laser cut chipboard pieces. They are thick as a nickel, so they're really stiff, almost like stiff like wood pieces. Love these beautiful board pieces from Renee Bouquets. Just gonna show you a few of these, painting around the edges using a pouncy brush on all of these. I usually love to leave all of these in their natural uh, color, but I wanted to brighten them up just a little bit for today's project. Now these are the papers I'll be using today, and ephemera tags and things, scrapbooking papers. I take all of them to my sewing machine, sew them. I'm just gonna show a little bit here, but the rest are done off camera because you get the gist. This little piece of uh, paper is actually, I cut off from some packaging because I love the word memorandum. I thought it was great. So, you know, take a look at your packaging before you throw things out. You might be able to cut it up and use some of the pieces for backgrounds on your projects. So I'm taking my open end of my scissor blade, scraping along all the edges of the papers to add further distressing and all my little tags here. And all these little tags and papers and things, you can get these in the scrapbook sections of you know the major craft stores and things like that. Rene Bouquets does carry uh, different brands of scrapbook papers and stuff that are really beautiful for you to look through. So now I'm just distressing all my wood pieces here that we just painted earlier with my 80 grit sandpaper and my sanding block. This way it gives it the nice farmhouse style appeal here. Want them to look kind of rustic as well. I just think it adds even more texture. Of course, you could skip this step if you want just the plain painting. But I usually do this on most everything for this. So for today's project, I'll be using Beacon Fabri-Tac uh, glue today. And now I'm gonna go ahead and start gluing down the numbers along the top and the right and lower side of this board here. Now, the reason I chose numbers and these wooden numbers, because this uh, piece is kind of titled Sweet Home Forever. And so I gathered like ephemera and all the beautiful board pieces from Renee Bouquets and the flowers and things like that. I gathered that because they um, kind of made a reference to me of your home. So that's what these numbers are for and why I'm adding them on there. Not only do they provide great texture in the background, but they kind of simulate like your house number, okay? So that was my thought process on why I'm using these wooden numbers today. And I'm laying them in all different directions just to give it a little bit of a whimsical approach. And so that just kind of looks really nice in the background because a lot of them will get covered up, of course. Get them down the way I want. And we're gonna go ahead and put this board down. Now these wood numbers are a little bit thick, so I've got a couple popsicle sticks here to take up the space 
on the other side where there's no numbers and I realized after I laid this down and I was twisting the whole piece up and around that you could see those so off camera I painted those little I pulled this back up and painted those little popsicle sticks in the gray color uh, the same as the board here so that it doesn't stick out we're going to start adding our paper onto the top board piece here and we're going to start layering everything on top to get our main decor here love the tones of aquas going to be layering down the sweetheart atc tag here adding some of the ephemera pieces and things on top and again i chose all these um, i chose like this ephemera piece because it matched the color this other um, this piece here i'm laying it sideways just all to give it a little bit of different texture but also because of the numbers on it you can see the one two three four five that way it'll kind of tie in with the numbers that I have laying on the bottom slat board. Way it all ties in nicely. Just checking my pieces here and there with my other piece that'll lay on top. Chose this card because it says evidence, like evidence of you know your sweet home, right? Your sweet home that you live in. That was my thought process here. And I'm using pieces of cardboard and stuff here because as I start layering, I need something to take up the space in between all my layers. So I know I've got a lot of new subscribers here lately. So I want to just kind of explain this is why I'm doing this. So you'll see me uh, cutting up pieces of cardboard. Um, you know, I have different colors of cardboard and things like that. And just, uh, you know, gluing them together to take up the space, like I said, so that everything lays nice and level. I don't want my papers kind of, you know, dipping in or anything like that. Got another little tag here. This used to be a big of a tag as the one I just laid down, but I didn't need it all. So I cut part of it off to use on a project later. So I'm just kind of seeing where I want it to be and I'll laying the paper on that's going to go on top, making sure I've got everything in position the way I want it. I'll check this quite a bit here. Laying this down, I'm realizing I need to level it up as well. So bear with me as I do this, but I like you to see this whole process so you can understand how to do it in case you want to, you know, try a few things for yourself, of course. This piece I'm just laying down, I'm using it as well because as you can see, it has numbers on it too. So now with the numbers in the background and the numbers on that tag and the numbers on the tag at the upper piece, now I've got a nice trio of numbers so that it all ties in. You wanna do things in odd numbers, right? And so as you see how I laid that down as well, the numbers in the background, the numbers at the top, the numbers on the lower right, if you draw like an imaginary triangle, now they're in a triangular pattern. So when you're laying things down with projects like this, you wanna think in odd numbers and you want your vision to think of in a nice triangular pattern so it's nice and cohesive all together. Finally laying that top piece on there and we're gonna bring in our H, M, N, E here. And I'm gonna use this uh, beautiful board, laser cut chip board chain link frame as my O. That way it gives it a nice fun texture there. Gonna hang these letters off the edge just a little bit so I have to move my tags out a little bit more so that they are seen. Otherwise, why do we lay them in there if we can't see part of them, right? Getting the M glued down, of course. Checking my position here and there. Now we'll get our H glued down. A little bit will hang off the edge, so don't want glue there. And then we'll glue down on that chain link frame where I know I'm gonna be covering up the glue. So here comes our decorative clock hand. We're gonna put it right in the middle. Of course, I use the clock hand to simulate time. Upcoming are here are some Rene Bouquet Mulberry Flowers. I've got sea foam and white, and I've got mini dusty teal roses and leaves. And I've also got these itty bitty blossoms in seafoam. I left the wire on them and I've curled them around the wire around the paintbrush to give it some texture. So I'll lay some of these flowers down. I've also got some flowers for my own supply I'm kind of adding in here. So lots of different shades of teals and aquas going on here. This is that I, uh, pretty ivy in the small. I'm just gonna tuck this right in amongst the flowers 
So it's a little bit up off of that chain link frame and you can see it, but it's just nice and subtle. And adding the flowers and stuff, here's kind of, you know, where the shabby comes in a little bit, the shabby chic. I love to combine, when I'm doing projects like this, I love to combine a little bit of the shabby chic with the farmhouse. When I'm doing regular farmhouse, I'd love to do the farmhouse in more of a rustic kind of theme. Just placing in some uh, other little flowers here, kind of bring in a little bit more of the white. Here comes the cute gears. There's four different gears to this set. These are my favorite gears here. Just plugging them in amongst the flowers. I used gears kind of to be in a reference to how family is blessed with the workings of love. So that was my thought process. Added a little metal frame in the upper right corner there. I thought it needed a little something else. Cutting a gear in half here to use one at the bottom and the upper right. So then that gives me what? My three gears, right? My set of odd numbers. Going to go ahead and add some of these itty bitty blossoms. I think they're so cute. Love to leave the stems on them and curl them for that texture. Here comes a little uh, beautiful board heart. It just comes from uh, one of the other, the ATC hearts. This is a little woodward I have that says forever. So that's a part of our title here. I'm adding this metal, little metal placket here. It says 52. So it's like, you know, your sweet home 52 weeks a year, right? So that's my process there. Here comes the sweet words, and that gives us our title, Sweet Home Together. This is Gaudy Girl Chunky Glitter Glass. Love to use this. I'm going to put this whole project on a dip pan. I've got a paintbrush. This is my 3D matte gel. It's an artist medium. If you don't have something like this or a, a matte gel or a medium from like, you know, uh, Michael's or Joann's or Hobby Lobby, you can use glue. Um, but I would suggest using a clear glue. And what I do is dip my paintbrush in the matte medium, I paint it on, and then I dump the glitter glass on top. So if you use a clear glue, you would just kind of, you know, glue where you want, dump your glitter glass on top, just like I'm doing here. Love the use of glitter glass because it just kind of adds that little bit of a romantic feel to it, kind of adds to the shabbiness of it. And then I turn it over and I dump the excess into my drip pan so I can pour it back into the bottle. Now I'm going to add, this is an actual little handle. I thought it was great. It looked like an actual door handle. So I'm just adding some pieces of cardboard again in the openings at the top and bottom of the door handle so that I can glue this onto the left side. And of course simulates the, you know, the door, the doorknob to our home. And I had, uh, this was a gold color when I started. I spray painted the doorknob in white so it would kind of match the white of all the beautiful board, laser cut chipboard pieces. And then once this doorknob is on, it makes this project complete. So I hope you enjoyed this project today. Leave me a comment down below and let me know your thoughts about it. Do you love the color palette that I used? Do you love kind of the farmhouse shabby chicness of it all? Do you love how I tied in elements to describe kind of the sweet home theme? Is there a particular product from Renee Bouquets that you would love to try? And speaking of that, I will have all the links to the product I used on today's project in the description box below, as well as everything Renee Bouquets, including the Facebook page, the Artists with an Edge group, where artists around the world enjoy sharing their projects using product from ReneeBouquets.com. Give this video a thumbs up. If this is your first time here and you'd like to see more DIY crafts, go ahead and hit that red subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on a single video. I have all my social media links down below. Come follow me on Instagram. I'd love to see you there and follow me on Pinterest and my blog. I thank you for sharing your time with me and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.